we came back in the summer of 1986 and, and literally uh, re-explored it. It was an amazing series of expedition, or series of dives. And we went and we documented the Titanic. But what was also amazing about that expedition is we were able to create a complete photo mosaic of the ship. Uh, and so we, we went in and we digitized the whole, actually we didn't digitize, this was 1986, we did film. We took a series of, of 3,000 images and then laced them together. It was quite a, a, a feat we did with, a, with the National Geographic Graphics Department. And we made this mosaic and that mosaic is on display. We then, to me, this was the most powerful image. This was to me what set the tone for our expedition was when we, you know, when you're down there and you're photographing the bow and you're photographing the stern and you're photographing the boilers and everything's gigantic, I gigantic, I gigantic. But then when you go across the debris field, you come across these pairs of shoes. And this is where the human, people forget that after the Titanic crashed to the bottom, about a half an hour later, all the people that were in the, in the water we were freezing to death. It took about 30 minutes to die in that cold water. And those that didn't have life jackets then came raining down. Hundreds and hundreds of bodies came like rain and landed all across the debris field of the Titanic. The animals quickly found them, removed their flesh, and the deep sea is undersaturated in calcium carbonate, so it literally dissolved all the bones. It takes about five years, but the entire skeleton of a human at those depths will vanish. And what's left behind are their pairs of shoes exactly as they were attached to the body. And this is what, and why I, we were so adamant about, you don't go to Gettysburg with a shovel, you don't take belt buckles off the Arizona, you really should not take things from this site.